My name is Megan. I'm going to be taking your Sculpt Masterclass tonight. Um, I will be running through everything for you. So tonight we're going to be making a double spouted vase. Um, and I'll be taking you through all the steps to make it. So here's a finished one that's been painted. And we've got a couple here in different sizes that I'll be running through. Um, just while a couple of minutes for you guys to join, um, if you want to grab a bowl of water, if you haven't already, uh, we'll be needing some water as we go, um, your bag or bags of clay. So we'll, I'll be working through one and a half bags of clay today. Um, you can also go with one bag if you just have the one bag, so don't worry about that. Um, and you want to grab your tools as well. Um, so if you've got a sculpt kit, you can grab your tools. If you haven't got a sculpt kit, you can get a knife, a butter knife will work too. Um, a pencil will be handy. And you might want to grab a ruler as well to work with. Uh, and a rolling pin if you have one as well. So if you can just get all of those and get yourself set up. And then we'll just get started and stuck in with the clay. Um, I will be looking through the chat as we go to try and answer your questions. So if you do have any questions as we go, please do pop them in there. Um, and I'll, I'll check that every now and then to make sure I can get through those. Um, but in the meantime, we'll get started in a minute. Okay, so to start with, I'm just going to open my bag of clay um, and I'm going to start with half a bag of clay. Now, if you do have just one bag of clay rather than two to work with today, um, start with a third of the clay instead of half of the clay and you can work with that. So if you're doing the smaller version with one bag, it will come out like this little one here, but if you've got a bit more clay, you can make a slightly bigger pot but either will be fine. Um, and it's up to you as well. If you prefer the smaller pot, go for it. So if you just unroll your clay for now. Okay, and I'm gonna start by just twisting off half the clay. So I'm literally just twisting it with my hands. And you want to make sure that you wrap up the rest to keep it nice and moist while we're not working with it, so we can come back to that. And to start with, this is a good opportunity just to get your hands nice and messy and to get stuck in with the clay, because um, it will get a little bit more delicate as we go along. Um, so it's a good opportunity to just work some of the moisture out of the clay, throw it between your hands a bit, squish it in your hands, and we're just gonna start to roll it into a ball as well. So it's a nice stress reducing exercise, just squeezing the clay in your hands after a long day at work. And I'm just going to start to roll that into a ball now. And the method that we're going to be using today is called the pinch pot technique. So I'll be walking you through that and we're going to be taking it to the next level today to make the vase and we'll be making the double spouted vase so you get two spouts for the price of one with this and it makes a great little ornament for your house it's a good for dried flowers as well Okay, just a little bit more, it's good to get some of that initial moisture out before we start working with the clay. Okay, so you should have rolled it into a ball. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold it in one hand and with the other hand, I'm just gonna grab my thumb and I'm gonna 
poke it into the ball about halfway down. So it should just sit on your thumb, like so. And with my other hand, I'm just gonna support that. And then with my index and middle finger, I'm just gonna pinch against my thumb in the middle there. So I'm just lightly pinching down, just applying a small amount of pressure. And as I do so, I'm just gonna to start to rotate it. So I'm gonna pinch and rotate, pinch and rotate, pinch and rotate, pinch and rotate. And as you'll see, it starts to open up in the middle there. So we want to do this a few times. We wanna keep going round and pinching. And the idea is you wanna try and apply an even amount of pressure as you go so that we can get the walls the same thickness all the way round. Now, you want to aim for a thickness of no less than about a centimetre or a third of an inch, um, because too much thinner than that and it will, you'll find it will be quite flimsy to work with. So just keep pinching out until it's opened up a bit more. And as it opens up as well, you'll be able to push your thumb into the bottom or your fingers too and just thin out the bottom of the pinch pot as well and as it gets a bit bigger you might want to use all four fingers to pinch if you find that easier and with the bot my bottom hand I'm literally just using that to support the pinch pot as I go okay so for anyone that joined a little bit later um, and didn't get to the first part where I was talking through how much clay we're using. Um, what you can do is if you've got two bags of clay, then you can start with half of a bag of clay um, and that will be enough to make a pot about this size. Um, but if you have just one bag of clay, that's fine too. Just work with a third of the clay. So just tear off a third of the clay and roll it into a ball. And I'll be walk walking through this pinch technique again because we're going to do this again. So you should be able to catch up if you've missed that first bit. So a third of the clay if you've got one bag or half of one bag if you've got more than one bag. And in the meantime, I'm just going to keep pinching this out until it's the required thickness. I'm just getting my fingers in the bottom there again just to thin that bottom out as well. Now I'm not going for a specific shape or anything at this point. It will be quite bumpy and lumpy with all your finger marks, which is absolutely fine. We'll have time to get that out later on. So it really is just about opening up that pinch pot at this time. So this is about the right thickness for my pot and I've thinned out the bottom again and if once you've done your first pinch pot you can just pop that to the side and this is going to form half of our pinch pot vase. So you can just pop that one down to the side and we're going to work on another one. So I'm going to unwrap the rest of my clay again. So for anyone who missed the first pinch pot, I'm going to run through that again now. So again, you can just squeeze it in your hands a bit just to work out that initial moisture from the second half of the clay. and just throw it between your hands, have a bit of fun with it, and then just start rolling it into a ball. Right. Okay. Okay, 
So once you've rolled the second half of your clay into a ball, we're going to pinch it out again. So I'm going to hold the ball in one hand and use my thumb of my other hand and poke it in about halfway down till it sits on my thumb, like so. And then I'm going to use the other hand to support it and just pinch with my index and my middle finger against my thumb in the middle there. So I'm just applying an even amount of pressure as I pinch and rotating it as I pinch too. So it's pinch, rotate, pinch, rotate, pinch, rotate. And that should start to open out. And the idea with the second pinch pot is that we want to kind of pinch it out till it's about the same size as the first one as we're going to be joining the two together. So just keep going until you've got it roughly the same thickness and size as the first. It's really hard to get it exact even when you're trying to split the clay um, if you're just splitting the clay by eye but don't worry as long as you haven't got one massive one and one tiny one you'll be absolutely fine. So I'm going with all four fingers here as it gets a little bit larger. And if at any point you feel that you've pinched it a bit too thinly, um, you can always roll it back up into a ball and pinch it out again. So don't worry about that. remember as well to get your thumb and your fingers into the bottom and thin that out as you go. Okay, so you should be able to, once you've pinched the two out, roughly put them together. You can see one of mine is slightly bigger than the other, but that should be absolutely fine for joining them. So as, again, as long as you haven't got one huge one and one tiny one, you'll be okay to move on to the next step. We'll just give it a few minutes for everyone to get their two pinch pots ready. When you are finished, you can just pop those to the side, grab yourself a cup of, a cup of water, just make sure you don't accidentally get your water mixed up for the clay with your drinking water. I always say that as a tip because I've accidentally drunk my clay water several times and I wouldn't recommend it. So maybe if you go for a bowl instead of a, a cup for your clay water, it's a wise decision. So don't worry if you see any little cracks or anything like that on the pinch pots for now. Um, we we'll should be able to smooth these out later, as long as you haven't got any huge cracks. Um, and if you do have any huge cracks as we go, I'll be talking through how you can patch them up. Um, but if you do see any larger cracks at the moment, you can just smooth them over with your finger. The clay is nice and moist, so it should be quite easy to just smooth that over for now. So what's... I'll just talk you through a little bit about um, the air drying clay that we're using, if you are using the sculpt clay, um, just so that you know what you can use your vase for when it's finished, while you guys are finishing off with your first two pinch pots. Um, so this is a special clay because as it says in the name it dries in the air, so I don't know if you guys have done any pottery before, um, but often you need to fire clay in a kiln, um, and since kilns get up to about a thousand 500 degrees Celsius. It's much hotter than your average oven. Um, so most of us don't have access to that and you, you can't just pop it in your average oven. So as, as this is the name, it just dries in the air and it has added fibers that give it strength to allow it to do so. 
um, but unfortunately that does mean it's not fully waterproof so you wouldn't be able to use your creations for anything food or drink related not that I'd imagine you'd want to drink out of a double spouted vase um, but you, you wouldn't want to put any live flowers in there so it's good for sort of singular dried flowers look really nice in these or you can just use it as a nice ornament in your house as well. Okay. So I'm just going to start talking through the next step. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch out a ledge around the top of my pinch pot vase. So to do that, I'm just holding the width of the rim there with my thumb and my finger. And I'm just going to peel that outwards. And you'll see as I peel out, peel that out, it creates a ledge and you want to do that all the way around and it doesn't need to look a certain way this is just going to help us join the two halves together so this is what it looks like when you fully pinch that out and from the sides so it's just a thin little ledge around the top there and you want to do that on both halves as well Okay, so hopefully you've all got the two ledges pinched out now on your two halves and the next stage is just joining them together. So to start with I'm just going to pop one on top of the other like so and so from now on we're going to be working with a hollow middle so you want to be careful not to put too much pressure on the pot with your hands from now on um, but what we want to do is just trap the air inside so to do that I'm just going to then pinch these two ledges that we've just created together to seal the air inside okay and the trapping the air inside is going to mean that the pot is stronger for us to work with and shape as we move forwards. So you just want to make sure that's nice and pinched and sealed so there's no visible seal there. Okay, so it always looks a little bit odd at this stage but I promise it does transform. I always liken my shape to, they tend to look a bit like jacket potatoes, a big baking potato at this stage with a strange little skirt on. Okay. So what we want to do now is get rid of this ledge that we've created in the middle there and secure our join. So in order to do that we need to blend it across the two halves um, to make it all one cohesive shape. So that sounds a bit scary so I'll take you through it step by step. Um, first off I'm just going to fold it upwards in one direction, doesn't matter which way you go. So you're just lightly folding it up with your finger. You can slightly smooth it in as you go. Folding upwards and smoothing in one direction.
Okay. So you can take your time with this step because it's one of the most important steps for the structural integrity of your vase. So take as much time as you need to just lightly bend and fold and blend that upwards in one direction. So after you've done that, you'll still have quite an unsightly join there. So you should have a bit of a rim around the middle of your pot. Just make sure you've folded it and blended it in one direction. And then we'll talk through the next step. And for the next bit, you also want to grab your knife tool. So if you've got the sculpt kit, you should have a wooden tool that looks a bit like a curved knife. If you don't have that, if you want to grab like a butter knife, um, that should do as well. You can use your fingers too, um, but the knife tends to be a bit easier. I'll be walking you through how to use that. So just go and grab whatever you need if you haven't got that already. And it's okay to just leave it on the surface. It'll start to flatten out on the bottom, but that's okay. So once you've finished folding upwards in one direction and you've grabbed your knife, we want to then blend it in the opposite direction with the knife tool. So I'm just going to use the knife to just spread it in the opposite direction. And I liken the pressure of this to spreading butter or icing. So it really doesn't need too much pressure. The clay is quite moist so it should move around quite nicely without needing any additional water at this stage. Um, and you want to just go in the opposite direction to that which you just folded it. You can also go back in the same, in both directions just to make sure it's nice and blended and also horizontally too. So the aim is just really to get rid of that seam, that visible seam, any lump from the join. So just take a few minutes for this step and go round the whole join until it's blended in and it's not about making the surface super smooth or anything like that. it is just about securing that join so you'll see how i'm just spreading the knife in all directions just to get rid of that seam there So you can see I've got a little bit of a dent here as I've blended and it's picked up a bit of clay. So what you can do if you find that you're in the same position, or even if it does go through to the hollow middle, don't panic, you will be able to fix it. So first off, I'd recommend just smoothing over as much as possible the existing clay with your finger. See if you can join the crack together. 
with your finger and if it's still got a bit of a dent and it still needs patching up what you want to do is grab some of your fresh clay so in my case I'm going in with my second bag of clay so I'm just going to open that up and unroll that and use this fresh clay to help patch it up. So I'm literally just going to swipe a little dab of it with my finger and again wrap up the rest of the clay again while you're not using it so it stays nice and fresh. Just pop that to the side. Okay so then you've got a dab of clay on your finger there and you can literally just patch it straight over that dent or crack with your finger and it's nice and fresh from the packet so it should just smooth right over and there you go it's all sorted so that can happen quite easily so don't worry if you find yourself in that position okay so I'm still going still going with the blending I'm gonna just pick up my knife and carry on where I left off Okay, so you can see that I can do the same blending technique with my finger as well as the knife, if you don't have the knife tool. So you might start to notice as well at this stage that you're getting bits of dry clay stuck to your hands and on the tool as well. So you can grab your sponge, which has disappeared. Here it is. So you can grab your sponge, just dab it lightly in the water and use it to wipe off your tools so that you're not then, when you're trying to blend with your knife, you're not then attaching dry lumps of clay and the same with your hands as well. I like to do that every now and then as I go, get rid of any dry bits of clay off my hands because um, from now on we want to try avoiding adding lumps as we go. Just use your sponge, or if you don't have a sponge, um, a, a cloth will be fine, a tea towel, just a little damp tea towel will work too. You can then just pop that to the side. Okay, so you can see now how my seam that we had is completely blended in. It's still a pretty lumpy, bumpy shape, and we'll be talking through how to shape it next. Um, so don't worry about the shape, as long as you haven't got a visible seam all the way around the middle and that it feels nice and blended in and joined together so i'll give you a couple more minutes for that as i say it's just quite an important step and then i'll start talking through how we can start to shape your vase the next step is to shape the ball of clay so we're going to be going for a sort of rounded shape today um, I will talk through some other techniques if you do fancy a different shape as well and um, so you don't have to follow this exact shape um, so first off we want to just roll it into a cylinder to get out some of those lumps and bumps so I'm just gonna hold it between my hands and again remembering that it's hollow in the middle so not putting too much pressure on it I'm just going to roll it on the surface, so I'm not pushing down with my hand, the surface is doing all the work for me. Now if you don't have a surface that you can roll on, you can also just tap it with your hands. So just hold it lightly in one hand and you can kind of cup your hand in a curved shape and pat it round and that will start to manipulate the clay into shape as well. 
we just want to roll or, or pat lightly. Okay. And then we want to do the same with the two ends. So I'm just going to tap out the ends to round them off as well. So you can roll them slightly on the surface. So I'm just rolling it in like a circular motion and then tapping out with my hand any lumps that come up. And you'll see how that's becoming more spherical. And you want to do the same with the other end too. So just roll it in a circular motion and then go in and tap with your hands. So I'm just using the flat of my hand here just to tease it into shape. You can also use a spatula for this as well if you have one handy. It might take a little bit of time just to tease into the shape you want. Now, as I said, you don't have to follow this exact shape. If you'd rather keep it just a cylinder, you can keep rolling it out lengthways. Um, you can also hold it in your hands and just tap it out on the surface if you'd like to flatten out the bottom or the top of it. So if you want to flatten any sides, you can just hold it and lightly tap it on the surface. and that will flatten it out for you. So again, if you do see any cracks or anything coming up at this point, just smooth over them with your finger and patch over with some new clay if you need to. Okay, and we do want to slightly flatten one side of it so that we can attach the two spouts. So once you're happy with your shape, you just want to tap out one side of it to use to get a flat surface to work on. to attach the two spouts because we're going to be building that up. We do need to start with a flat surface to attach those onto. Okay. So you can just tap it out till you're happy. And it will start to flatten out at the bottom as well. It does need a flat bottom to sit on, so it'll just do that naturally sitting on the surface. So you don't need to worry about that. This will be the final shape for the base. So it's this, this bottom shape here that we're talking about now. Um, so the two spouts will be added separately. And we'll also we'll be building up the, the vase around them as well to give it a more tapered look. Um, so it is just this base bit here. So just make sure you're happy with that. Um, before you add the two spouts on because it's harder to sort of shape it once you've got things sticking out of it and things added on so it's best to make sure you're happy before you add them on so Another minute on that and then we'll talk through how to make the two spouts. So once you're happy with your shape, we're just going to pop that to the side out the way while we make the two spouts. 
Okay, so just pop that to the side. And then this is where you need to grab a bit more of your clay. So if you were working with one bag, you should have a third of your bag left. But if you're working with two bags, you should have a whole new bag ready to work with. So if you've got a third left, just tear off about half of what's left there. And if you have got the whole bag of clay, um, if you tear off about just under half of the clay, it doesn't need to be too precise. And then just make sure again to wrap up the rest to keep that nice and fresh. And same as before, I'm just going to quickly work it in my hands to make it more malleable and get some of that initial moisture out. Um, now for this next step, we are going to use a rolling pin. Um, so if you haven't got a rolling pin, you can use like a steel water bottle or a wine bottle. So hopefully you have something around the house that you can use. We do just want to get some of that moisture out before we start rolling it out. So you can just play around with it first. And same as before, I'm also going to just roll that into a ball. Okay, and then you might just want to brush off any bits of dry clay off your surface so that it doesn't get stuck to it whilst we roll out the clay. Just brush those to the side, should be okay. And again, it's probably a good opportunity to get it off your hands as well. So just dip your sponge or your cloth in a bit of water and just wipe your hands clean before we move on. So just to get started as we roll it out, you can just sort of start to flatten it a bit with your palm to help you out. Now, if you don't have a rolling pin at all, you can also use this method to flatten it out a bit more. Okay, so I'm just flattening out the ball a little bit with my hand. Then I'm gonna grab the rolling pin and start to roll that out. One side, and I'm just gonna flip it over every now and then and I'm trying to just apply an even pressure. Now in terms of the thickness that we're going for, we want to aim for about half a centimetre to a centimetre thickness, or about sort of the width of a pencil. And you want to pick it up as well to avoid it getting stuck to your surface. So just do it in little increments and we're just rolling out a slab here. So roll and flip. So this is where a ruler might come in handy if you do have one, um, but if not, don't worry. The measurements don't need to be exact or anything. It's also just handy to kind of have something straight. So if you don't have a ruler, um, maybe sort of like a, a leaflet or something that you don't mind getting a little bit dirty to cut 
your clay with. Okay, so this is pretty good thickness. I'll show you what that looks like. So in terms of if you're measuring against the sculpt paintbrush, for example, or a pencil, it's roughly the same thickness as the end of the paintbrush. Or again, you can have a look with a ruler. Should be between half a centimetre and a centimetre. So that's looking pretty good. Okay, so once you've done that, what we're going to do now is we're going to cut out the two spouts. So I'm going to go in with my ruler and we also want to grab another tool here. So if you've got the sculpt kit, you can grab the cutting tool. So it's a, similar, a bit similar to the knife, but it's got a, a straight flat edge that you can cut with. Um, and again, if you, don't, if you don't have that, you should be able to use your butter knife again. That should be okay. So don't worry about that. Um, and to start with, I'm just going to make this into a rectangle. So I'm not measuring anything. I'm just going to cut off um, the two ends. So I'm going to lay my ruler down flat. And with the sharp end, the pointy end, I'm going to hold it at a right angle to the ruler and just literally slice through the clay and just tear that off. Just pop that to the side. And I'm going to do the other side as well. Just cutting a rectangle out of the clay with your knife or with your cutting tool. So you should have two straight edges now and we want to cut the top and bottom straight as well. There we go. You can just sort of wipe off any clay that is dragged off with it. Okay. And you can just wrap this leftover clay back up to use later on if you need to. So we should now have a rectangular slab. And from this we're going to cut our two spouts. So if you do have a ruler, what we're going to aim for, if you're going for the bigger pot, so if you're using two bags of clay, we're going to aim for about five by two centimetres, five by four centimetres. So that's also roughly about probably the size of my pinky finger, if you want to use that for measurement, if you don't have a ruler. So I'm just going to hold my ruler there. I'm just going to lightly mark in five centimetres and then four centimetres down. So again, you can just roughly guess that if you don't have a ruler. And the second one is going to be about two and a half centimetres by four centimetres. So I'm just going to go along and mark a two, two and a half centimetres and the four centimetres is the same so I can cut that off completely with the cutting tool and I've got another one here should the first ones go completely wrong so I'm then going to cut where I've made the five centimetre mark or again roughly the length of my pinky finger your pinky finger um, if you're doing the slightly smaller vase if you're only using one bag of clay you can make it a little bit shorter than that so it's up to you but you're just looking for a rectangle basically here so you want one larger rectangle and one smaller rectangle i'm going to slice through five centimeters and then again at two and a half for the smaller one okay so i've then got two little rectangles here to work with and now we just need to make these into cylinders to attach so you should then have the two rectangle, rectangles ready um, and we're just going to wrap it around so you should have a needle tool if you've got the sculpt kit or you can use a pencil or the paintbrush as well and um, whichever whatever you have to hand 
Um, for, I'm going to pick up the first rectangle and I'm holding it near the top of the needle tool here and I'm just going to bend it roughly around the needle tool there and so it should sort of meet the other end that should be about right and when it does you just want to pinch the two ends together so I'm just sort of blending it with my finger and then I'm just going to blend that in with my finger to join it together so you're joining it around so it loosely fits on that needle tool or paintbrush or pencil whatever you're using you can use that to wrap it round um, you can pull that out and you want to you'll see you'll be able to see the join on the end there so you want to just blend that over with your finger as well both ends where the join is just blend that in and on the inside there's a bit of a seam as well so if you can go in with your pencil or your needle tool and you can just hold it in your fist just to keep it secure and you can wiggle the pencil or needle tool around just to secure the seam on the inside as well until it's fully joined and then you've got a cylinder and to flatten out both ends you can just tap it on the surface like we did when we were flattening the pot Okay, you can just tap on the surface and flatten out those two ends. So that's the larger cylinder that we're going to attach for one of the spouts. You can just pop that to the side. And the same with the second one. We're going to wrap it around the pencil or needle tool again till it meets. Pinch the, where it meets together and then just blend in with your finger to join it and you can take it off again and blend the seam at the top and bottom with your finger just running my finger around the top there And same again on the inside, I'm just going to take my needle tool or pencil and just twist it around a little bit, supporting it in my fist to blend the seam on the inside, make sure it's nice and secure. And then I'm going to tap it out on the surface just to flatten out the two ends. Okay, so then you can see we've got a larger spout and a smaller spout ready to attach to our pot. So I'm just going to now grab my pot again in the middle here and I'm going to talk through how to join the two spouts. So first off you might just want to play around with positioning. Um, so they might look a bit strange at the moment, like two little binoculars, but as I said, we will build up the clay around it so the join isn't quite so obvious. But you want to leave, I'd say, at least a finger gap between the two to give you enough space to build up the clay around them. So just have a play around with where you'd like to position them. I usually go for sort of somewhere in the middle, but of course if you want to, you can go for something a bit off-centre. It's completely up to you, it's your creation, your vase. But once you're happy, with your positioning, just grab your pencil or needle tool again and just lightly mark where you're going to put it. Both spouts so that you know where to put them. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to do a technique called scoring to attach them. So the best way to do this 
is using your fork tool if you've got the sculpt kit. So that's the one that looks like a bit of a squished fork. If you don't have that, you can use the end of a pencil or your knife, the tip of your knife as well. So don't worry, just need something to scratch the surface with basically. So if you're using the fork tool, what I'm going to do is I'm going to score where I've made the two marks of where I want to add the two spouts. So what that means is just dragging it in one direction first and then back in the other direction to cross hatch it. So essentially I'm just creating a little bit of texture on the surface here. And the reason we do this is that it gives the clay something to cling onto. So you're not then joining two smooth surfaces, you're joining two textured surfaces and it allows it to bond more easily. So you want to do that in both places that you've marked to attach the two spouts. And we also want to do that on the bottom of the spout that we're joining as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna pick up one end and score that end as well. It doesn't have to be exact as long as it's nice and textured. And the same with the other one. One end, I'm just gonna score that as well with my fork tool or pencil or knife, whatever you're using. You can, of course, use a kitchen fork as well if you have one of those handy. Okay, so that's the two pieces of clay scored and the pot scored as well. And now what we want to do is add a little bit of water because that acts like a glue. So I'm just gonna dab my finger in my water bowl just lightly and first off dab it over the texture I've made on the pot. Now you don't want to use too much water, you'll notice if you use too much water it just smooths out the texture you've just created. So don't worry if that's you, you can just go back in again and add a bit of more texture on top. But it should just feel lightly tacky and sticky to the touch like a glue. And you want to do again the same on the ends of the spouts as well. Okay, so they just feel lightly sticky to the touch and nice and textured and it does act like a glue that water to bind. Okay, now it's ready to join so I'm going to pop one spout on. I'm just going to lightly tap it on and you should be able to sort of wiggle it about. It's not going to just rush off but we do need to secure the joins. So I'm going to do the same with the other one, position that, slightly tap it, give it a wiggle. Okay, so you should be able to feel it starting to bond. But now what we want to do is just secure that join. So I'm going to go in with the end of my fork tool, so it has another end. It's the same as the cutting tool that we're using, so it's kind of like a spatula type end. You can also use the end of a pencil or the needle tool or your finger as well to get in there. But we just want to blend that seam. So it doesn't need to look pretty or anything at this stage because we're gonna build up some clay around it as well. But I'm just going in with the end of the tool and I'm just dragging the clay lightly down from the neck, from the spout, into the pot. And you want to do that all the way around so that you can't see a seam there anymore. So again, don't worry about what this looks like, it's just about making sure it isn't joined in. And you can get in there with your finger as well. Okay. And same with the other spout. You just want to blend that in with your tool or your finger. Until you can't see a seam there anymore. So 
you'll notice they might sort of sag a little but you can just prop them up as you go right so now we just want to build up a bit of clay around them to support the join and also to go for the kind of merged more tapered attached look that we've got in this pot here so to do that you want to grab some fresh clay so you should have a little bit left over with whichever amount of clay you were using so I'm just going into the fresh clay tearing off just a little bit with my hand to start with and I'm going to roll this into a coil or a sausage shape so I'm just going to roll it in my hands move up to the side so you can see and I can also roll it out on the surface a bit. It doesn't need to be precise, it's just going to be used to bulk out the area. Okay. So what you want to then do is you can wrap it round. So I'm going for about probably pencil thickness again with this. You can just wrap it round one of the spouts and the other spout as well. It should get in between the other spout. And you can just tear it off where it overlaps. And now I'm going to start blending that in. So this is fresh clay, so we don't need to attach it in the same that we did, way that we did with the spouts. It should just blend straight in. So I'm going in with my finger to start with to just Merge it down into the surface. You can also, if you find it easier, use the end of your tool if you prefer. Okay, and you want to do the same in the middle there with the two coils that you've added. Just blend that down into the surface. I'm using the sides of my fingers. Okay. And we also want to blend it upwards into the two spouts. So I've now gone, blended it into the pot. We also want to blend it upwards into the spouts. So I prefer to use a tool for this so that I can use my hand just to stabilize the spout. And I'm just gonna blend upwards. You can use any tool for this. I'm using the end of the fork tool. And I'm just Blending it upwards so that you get rid of that seam. And this is just helping to create that tapered look and also to support the join of the spouts that we've just attached. Now, don't worry if you're thinking there's no actual holes in this yet. That will come next once we've finished attaching them. And it will be a usable vase. You can add as many coils as you like if you'd like to build it up some more once you've finished blending these in. You feel free to do so, add another couple if you'd like to build it up some more. It's completely up to you. Can you move the plastic out of the shop?
Okay, so you should then have a bit more of a tapered look there. Um, as I said, you can add a few more coils if you'd like to. Um, it doesn't have to be a coil. You can also just grab a bit of fresh clay with your finger. Pat it down wherever you'd like to add a bit of extra padding and just put that on and blend it in as well. And the next step will be adding the holes and then it's just about smoothing out that surface. And I can talk you through ways to add texture to the surface as well if you'd prefer to have a textured surface. Okay, so I'll just smooth it out with my finger. And next up, we're now going to create the holes to make it into a vase. So these should be the perfect width for your pencil or whatever you wrapped it round to start with. So in my case, it was the needle tool. So I'm going to go in with the thin end of the needle tool or the tip of your pencil, whatever you were using before, the tip of your paintbrush. And I'm just going to poke it through one of the spouts. I'm then going to twist it in to the pot below. So I'm not just pushing it down, I'm twisting it in. And you should feel it reach a hollow and it kind of drops in. And then you can just lightly twist it. So I'm just going to support the spout with my hand as I twist it about. And that will open up the hole inside and also blend in the join of the spout on the inside as well. So you just want to do that with both, both spouts. So just pierce and twist. And support it with your hand as you twizzle that around a bit inside to make sure the holes open up. Okay, you can have a check, see if it looks okay. And that is your double spouted vase. But we might want to now smooth out the surface a bit because um, I've got lots of finger marks in there still. Um, and you might want to continue building up the clay around if you'd like it a bit more tapered. So you can do that if you'd like to. Um, so I just need to wipe off my hands before I attempt to smooth it so that I'm not adding more lumps where I'm trying to take them away. So I'm just going to grab my sponge again, a bit of a damp sponge, just wipe off any dry bits of clay, move any bits of clay or dry bits of clay on my surface out of the way as well. Pop the tools to the side. So now I'd like to go ahead and smooth my surface. So first off, you can go in with your fingers as the first point of call. At this point, if your clay's feeling like it's getting a bit drier, you can now add a little bit of water to help you smooth. So again, just a dab, just a tiny bit, and you can use that to help you smooth the surface. So either your finger or the knife, the curved knife tool that we were using before is a great place to start to smooth the surface. So again, you can just dip the knife in a tiny bit of water as well if you're feeling like the clay is a bit dry and needs a bit of help to be smoothed. So you want to do that all the way around. Now, of course, if you don't want to do that, you want to leave it lumpy or you want to actually add texture to it, you can do that too. So you can use anything really to add texture to it. So you could use the end of a paintbrush, for example, to stipple into the surface. So I could stipple into the surface and have a nice textured look.
And you can also try this out, and if you don't like it, it's pretty easy to just smooth it back out again with your finger. So please feel free to play around. You can also, in terms of adding texture or carving into it, if you want to carve into it to add any lines or decorations, you can do that after the class for six, up to six to 12 hours. So the best thing is to make sure you're happy with the shape first. But as I said, you could use the end of a paintbrush or pencil to stipple the surface. You could even do texture in just little sections as well. It's completely up to you. Or sometimes I like to use the needle tool to draw into it. Again, I'm just going to wipe off any dry clay that's on the tool. But you can just draw lines on it with the needle tool as well. You can have a play around if you don't like it. As I said, clay is pretty forgiving, so you can just smooth it back over with your finger. So I'm just going to continue smoothing out the surface of my pot with my fingers to start with. And a tiny bit of water. Now, if there are any areas you need to take away any clay, so if you've got, I think Maggie's just asking the question, did I use the pencil tool to make the holes for the spouts? Yes. So whichever tool you were using to wrap the, the, the rectangles around to make your spouts, you can use that again because it could, should fit nicely into the width of the spouts that you've created. So in my case, I was using the needle tool, or you could use the end of your pencil or paintbrush. So it was just twisting it in. So pushing it down and twisting it in. And then once you get, you should feel when it gets to the hollow. And once you get there, you can give it a bit of a wiggle about and open up the hole in the inside. And that should give you the two holes on the inside. Okay, if, you, if you've got any areas where you need to take away some clay, you can use the wire tool in your sculpt kit if you've got one handy. So this is a sculpting tool. So the flat, the sort of triangular end is great for flat surfaces. So if I wanted to smooth out the tops of my spouts, for example, I could support it in my hand and drag the wire tool across the top of the surface of the spout and what that does is it brings it drags off the clay with it as it goes so it literally just takes away clay so if you've got any lumpy bits we need to take away some clay and you've got the sculpt kit to hand you can use that wire tool to do so so it's good for just flattening out the tops of of your spouts Once you're happy with how smooth you've got the surface with just your fingers and you're happy and you've got rid of any finger marks, any lumps, any cracks, anything like that, there is one final step that you can use just to smooth out the surface even more. So it's actually to use your sponge if you've got sponge available. You can use a household sponge as well if you don't have this one in the sculpt kit but it should be damp enough if you've been using it throughout the class but otherwise just dip it lightly in the water so I like to just pinch 
pinch the sponge, dip the edge of it in the water. You don't want too much water, otherwise it will just push and create a paste and it won't actually be smoothing out and doing its job smoothing. So as the final step of smoothing, you can just move the sponge, lightly damp sponge around the clay and you should notice that gets rid of any final finger marks, anything like that on the surface. Now what I would say is the the clay is quite forgiving as well in the sense that once it's painted any sort of little minute things that you're noticing now I'm sure won't be visible when it's painted and decorated. Now you'll need to leave your creation about two to three days to dry. So if you've got the bigger one it will probably be more on the three days side. Um, if you've got the smaller one two days might be okay but what you'll notice is when it dries it goes lighter grey in colour um, and it also feels more dusty to the touch so it's, it'll be a bit patchy as it's drying and then it'll be completely lighter grey in colour you should be able to feel it and it feels dusty whereas obviously at the moment it feels a bit sticky and moist and that's when you know it should be ready to go and paint and once, you're, once it's dry as well you want to go in first with a layer of white paint so you can use if, if you've got the sculpt kit you'll have a white pot of white paint that you can use but you can use any acrylic based paint as well um, and you want to do a layer of white paint even if you're then going to paint it another colour like this one for example because that acts as like a priming layer um, as the clay is quite porous so it's good to just do the layer of white paint first and then you can decorate it with any other colours that you like so in this case we've gone for pink and red and green um, and you can look on our Sculpt Instagram for inspiration for decorating. Pinterest is another great place to go to look for inspiration too. Um, and you can also use, um, we've, we've got some Sculpt paint pens you can use as well. So paint pens, acrylic markers also work, um, Sharpies, things like that for any finer details. And when you're completely finished painting, you then want to use your sealant as the final step. So the sealant, um, so the paint should take about 10-20 minutes to dry so you should be able to paint it all and decorate it in one session. Once you've finished painting it and the paint's dry you can then seal it with your sealant um, and it comes out kind of milky in colour but it does dry clear so don't worry about that um, and it helps to, it adds a little bit of a gloss and a shine and it just protects your decoration and your creation. So that's, that's that, um, but we are running a little competition as well for everyone that's taken part in this masterclass today. So you'll find the full details of it on our Instagram, but we'll be um, celebrating the top 10. The details to enter, you'll be need to tag Sculpt It in your feed or your story, um, and also use the hashtag Sculpt with your finished creation. And you have until the 5th of September at midnight to enter. As I said, don't feel that you need to write these details down. The info is all on our Instagram post about the class, so you can find that out there. And then the winner will be announced on the 6th of September, the next day, again on our Instagram. And there are some prizes for the top three, um, details of which can be found on the post. Um, and thank you so much everyone for joining. I hope you've enjoyed your class and you've come away with a lovely double spouted vase and I'll be really looking forward to seeing all of your creations um, on the Instagram. So please do tag us on there and yeah, enjoy the rest of your day or evening, whatever time of day it is for you there. Thank you so much for joining.